Hello guys, my name is Sebastian Passion. In this video I will go through how to actually fetch data from backend or from an API per se. Uh, the, thing, the first thing we want to be able to do is we need to set up a route. So we'll create a component, ng generate component, uh, let's call it home. And we also want to set up a service, so just call it ng generate service my data. So it will be named my data service. Uh, so once this is done, just find app routing module. Here we need to specify a path. So when we are on empty, it will be like a, on the main screen in this case. Uh, use component home component in this way. So we want to, the home component to be the first page. So now you should be able to see home works. Jump into the home component. Let's just add the HT tag fetching data from backend. And what we need to do now is essentially we need to add HTTP, sorry, uh, we need to add uh, an import, which is going to be HTTP client module. This one is essentially making it possible for you to, for us to use the HTTP, HTTP client within Angular. So we're going to import it uh, and we're, it's going to be imported from Angular common HTTP. All right, so now that we have done this, we have set up a route. We are ready to go. We need to create a service if we already haven't. Yeah, we have created the service. So let's jump into it. Now we need to inject. So we need to inject HTTP here and from HTTP client. This will make it possible for us to actually make a get or post or, or put or delete. There's probably multiple ways to do it. This is the most uh, common case in Angular. So let's call it get data. We don't need to add type search. It's not. Uh, so return this dot HTTP and here you can say get dot get dot delete put post whatever we're going to look at get today and we are looking at a um, a free API. So the free API that we're going to use is essentially Open Brewery. Um, so it's, uh, it's it takes a page, uh, how many items per page and a query. Let's just enter test. In this case, just for testing purposes, now we have actually set up a function that returns an observable, which returns the response from this API. All right. So now we can go to our home component. So home component. If you do control P, uh, this is the way you can search for it uh, just uh, for your information. So now we need to inject my data service. OK, my data service. And then you can say, hey, this my data service, get data. Honestly, just move it to ng on in it. Um, and you can subscribe data. Uh, and you can say my data. And you can say this my data equals to data. Of course, it's going to complain about typing. So you can add just add an any type to it. Just for now, you should always type it. This is just for visibility purposes. Um, so now we have actually receive the data, my data, we can print it here. And you'll see that we have all of the data. Here. Then there's even alternative ways because this will will force us to automatically unsubscribe to it. Because when you subscribe to something and you don't unsubscribe to it, you, it will cause memory leakage. So one, if you always know that it will, will be fetched always once, Either you could do this, you can say, hey, I want to take one because this was, will essentially unsubscribe, it will complete it. Um, so if, if we compare this to the most preferred one, which would be my data like this, uh, the code differences would be huge. So look at this difference. Uh, it will fetch the data, it, it will fetch the observable. And when we go to the HTML of the code, we can say, hey, we have, let's say we have a list and we loop through the list and we say, hey, let the item. So item is one row of the API of uh, my data uh, and the dollar sign is used to, to actually uh, visualize that you have an observable. It makes it much more easier for you to understand what is this? Is this an object or is it an observable and so on? So always use the dollar sign. It's a common pattern. So let's say let's print all of the IDs for the items that we find. In this case and you'll see one two three four five this is what we specified in our api so in this way you don't have to unsubscribe to it you don't have to do anything but a common thing would be that hey i still want this data for me to be available in my component 
because now it's it's not available in the component and and one common way to do it is to use the pap, tap functionality so you'll do pipe and then you'll tap and you say data and let's see here this my data equals to data and you need to import a tab from rxjx uh, library in this case and what it will do is essentially whenever the observable is triggered it will run this tab functionality and it will define your data to be defined also in the component because we set it to be my data in this case so if you go to an html here as we can see it has uh, prompted my data as a JSON format, which means we have actually received my data in the component. And this is very useful for different purposes. Maybe you want to have filter functionality, or maybe you want to do some logic in the component based on this. All right, guys, thank you for me. This is this is the way how you fetch data from, uh, from backend. The most common way would be to use pipes. Uh, the async pipe in this case, it's, it's a very common pattern. Use it as much as possible. Uh, thank you for listening guys uh, please leave a comment subscribe um, any feedback or anything you want me to show really anything guys thank you bye